Thank you very much, everyone. And next up, we have with us the fireside chat between John and Min Liang Tan from Razor. Please welcome them to the stage. Min Liang and John, let's welcome you back. Min Ling just had a very, very amazing keynote at our main stage, and so he's making his way right now, and uh, he'll be with us in a moment. Okay, hello. Very excited to talk to you. Um, usually when we, when we chat, you normally say things that make your PR people go, oh, uh, I'm not sure you should really say that. So, so can we start with something? What's, what are you guys up to at the moment? Any, anything that's, that's, that's coming up that's interesting? Sure. Um, that, that's not in the PR person's diary? That's not a PR surprise. person's diary. No, unfortunately, um, because I draft the PR person's diary. Okay, well, I'll, I'll throw some questions in as we go. We'll sure, sure. Can... So let's talk a little bit about what we're doing first. Okay. Um, well, still hyper-focused, uh, I think, on uh, gaming peripherals. We're doing incredibly well over there. Um, you know, our gaming mice, keyboards, etc., uh, headsets. We're still world number one and um, really pushing the um, envelope of engineering before the Lancet we've just launched. Um, so that's for the gaming peripherals um, business. Um, the systems business, the laptops, um, we have moved out of uh, just focusing on the, the US market. We've just launched in uh, three countries in Europe, and uh, it's doing incredibly well. I think what we're doing is, uh, and I, I get a lot of questions in the, uh, uh, the audience of when are we gonna get more blades and stuff like that in Singapore. We're gonna be um, catching up with production and, and doing whatever we can. And finally, I think what's super exciting for us right now is um, our launch of uh, Z Gold, which is our virtual currency for gamers. Um, in the first couple of days, we've um, opened about over a million uh, wallets. Um, with Z Gold, we've got a, a, a huge number of our user base um, who are already on our Z Silver platform, which is a loyalty points platform, and um, pretty much kicking ass from that perspective. Okay, so that's quite a lot of stuff. So the, so the uh, Blade, right? Is, yes. the, is the gaming uh, laptop that you guys launched, yes. right? And how much does that cost if you can buy one? Um, so we've got three, uh, three products, uh, I think, in the space. We've got the Razer Blade Stealth, which um, connects to external G eGPU. It's about 1,000 US dollars, um, and it scales up to about 2,000 US dollars. That's a 12.5 that's inch um, uh, Ultrabook. We've got the 14 inch uh, Razer Blade that ranges anything from about $1,900 US to uh, $2,500, $2,600 US, and we've got the Razer Blade Pro, which uh, retails at uh, only um, 4,000 US dollars. And that's 4,000 US You're just waiting for that. Uh, yeah, I, I admit I was waiting for that. You just set me up for that. Well, I mean, it's a marketing panel, right? So how do you market a $4,000 laptop to people? How do you make people, people, people buy that? How, how do you build a brand that makes somebody give you $4,000, right? That's a pretty serious amount of money. Sure. For a laptop. I, 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 I mean, think a, a MacBook is what? 1500 1500 to 2000 So why am I going to pay more than double for your machine? So, so I think um, something we don't talk about much is that uh, we actually don't spend a lot on marketing. Right? It's um, compared to most of the other consumer brands out there. Um, our focus has always been on R&D and engineering. Well, I mean, what, what kind of marketing do you do? You do like Facebook ads or, or any kind of general um, marketing stuff to get So a lot of that's driven by our distributors. Ourselves, I think we're constantly talking to our users. You know, um, we reach out to them um, through social media, as I, I spoke about just now. Any ways and means in which we can uh, communicate with our users. But as I mentioned, our focus is really to design and engineer products. So, you, you, you spoke about why would anyone buy a $4,000 Razorblade Pro? Well, it's the only laptop in the world that has a GTX 1080 in the form factor as thin as that. Um, likewise, why would anybody buy a Razorblade at $2,000 when laptops can be uh, found out there for $500? Because a mouse as well for 140 US dollars. Right? Absolutely, that's Razor kind of Lancet. <laughs> um, but then again, it's the only mouse that has um, the best performance from a wireless perspective, and um, that's what we do. So. So I think most traditional companies will look at price brackets and then they try to shoehorn a product into the price bracket. 
We, on the other hand, we know our user, we know ourselves. I'm designing for myself, and if I want to design for myself, I don't want a shitty mouse, I don't want a shitty laptop, I don't want something designed for a price bracket or a budget. I want to design the very best product out there. And that's why we end up with uh, sometimes a $4,000 laptop, but it's the only $4,000 laptop on the planet that is super thin, super light, and runs a GTX 1080, which is more powerful than most of the desktops out there. That's a very good pitch. Nice sales pitch. So, so, as, so you, I mean, you're, you're the head of the company, right? You're always traveling every, what, two or three days? You're flying like two times a week? Yeah, right? I got in last night. I'm flying out to London tonight. Yeah. Right, and that, that's normal for you, right? Sorry? That, that's a normal thing for you to be traveling oh, yeah. every couple of days? I, I think for the past couple of years, I haven't stayed in a single city for more than uh, four or five days. Um, and that's the longest stretch I've ever been in a single city. Uh, okay. And, 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 but you're still involved in the actual uh, uh, design of products where you have input in, into that stuff? Well, we've got a big team um, uh, working on it. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a team effort. But myself, I tend to like to have my hands on the product to test them out, um, use the prototypes. So we've got three design centers. So every month I go between San Francisco, which is one of our design centers, to, to Taiwan and back to Singapore. So I'm back actually in Singapore like uh, three or four days uh, a month. And um, over and above, if let's say, like recently I was looking at one of our upcoming Razor stores, um, I want to make sure the positioning of the logo is right, the tiles were lined up right, um, the materials were the materials I wanted, the um, seam of the thing was done exactly where I wanted it to be. Um, because we've ripped up floors, right? You know, the Shanghai store, I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, there was, I think, three days before the, the opening, I realized the seam was off like three and a half millimeters. And these are just small things that, that everybody, it's just evident to everyone. But because somebody says, oh, it's okay if it's three and a half millimeters. No, it's not okay if it's three and a half millimeters. You rip it up and you redo the whole floor again. And things like that, um, I'm still a little hands-on. I bet your staff love that, right? They've done all the planning and you come and you're like, ah, no, that, that's slightly off. No, so, so right now I think the, the difference is the staff will make sure I get to whichever city to look at the stores and stuff like that. Uh, but I mean, I mean the, 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 actual, the, the, the stores that you have are interesting, right? So, you know, we, we were just talking about this off stage and you said, you know, e-commerce, uh, the, 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 there's an argument that e-commerce is the big thing, right? Like that's how you connect people and, you know, actual, uh, uh, brick and mortar, you know, stores are actually dead, right? But you you argue that that's not the case, right? What's the the, the, the the approach that you guys take is a bit, you know, uh, uh, different to that the average company, right? Absolutely. What, what's that approach? So so I think the big thing right now um, is that retail is dying, right? Everyone on Facebook is is reading about it. You know, whoever whichever brand is shuttering 150 stores or or people are being put out of jobs and stuff like that, and that's terrible. But Ourselves, we are opening stores everywhere because it provides a direct conduit to the, to the users themselves and we design them to be um, areas that we want to be in for gamers by gamers, exactly the same way that we design product. So, um, and I was, I was just saying, you know, we, we get mall operators or owners coming to us saying, oh, you know, if you want to sell more product, you've got to light up your, your, your um, store a lot more. And when I go into your store, nobody's trying to push me to sell, to buy product. And, and that's not right. And, and we go like, well, we want to, we, we've always wanted to design a Razor store exactly how we want to be in the stores ourselves, where nobody comes to bug me. I can play games there all day long. We get the latest and the greatest gear. So Razor stores have been doing phenomenally well for us, uh, and we are opening one pretty soon. Another Here? One. No, no, no. In um, Singapore? Not in Singapore. Why not? Um, I think we haven't found the right uh, venue or location. Apple is doing it, right? Uh, well, I think Apple Apparently. Apparently. Yeah, that's right. And, and for us, we've, um, I think the curious and interesting thing is uh, every time we open a Razor store, the schools all around have a bit of a, there's an effect on all the schools are around. And I, I never liked it back in the day when I was in Singapore, right? I had to bring an extra t-shirt in my bag when I go to play in an arcade or something like that. I mean, that's bullshit. Um, so, you know, I, I was telling the stores, like, can you have a stack of t-shirts you can loan the students when they come into the store and, and things like that. Um, it's free gaming at all the Razor stores. I see somebody shaking their head. Come on. It's, so the, right. you guys, I mean, so you're calling it a store, right? Um, but obviously they, they, you don't ha have any actually here. So perhaps the audience haven't actually been to your stores, but they're not really stores, right? It's not really a store. Like nobody's really selling you anything. Nobody's selling like, anything. It's, it's what, what we call a razor zone, right? It's, a, it's an area where um, you can have the best gaming experiences. We've got the best gear. And skip school. Uh, well, we, are, you, we, are you pro skipping school? Or? We, we, um, well, when I was in school, I was very pro skipping school. So, um, 
yeah, but that's another story. Okay, but so yeah, so, so, so the store is more like experience, right? So it's like a place you can hang out and you can stay there for all day and you use stay there the all day, Wi-Fi. You can just play games um, and we got all the best stuff over there. We'll, every weekend we'll run a tournament. Um, we're always doing, we have streamers coming on board, YouTubers uh, and, uh, you know, fun stuff. We want them to be like a nexus or a temple of which all gamers will come and gather. And it doesn't matter whether you're, you're using a Razer product or you're a fan. Um, we, have, we want to be, you know, doing everything for gamers by gamers. And, and as you open those stores, do you see an uplift in like, in like sales? Is it, is it like tangible that you're selling more product in a, in a city or a country? Uh, yeah, it's, um, we, we've seen a um, good uplift, I think, um, in the cities that we're at. But I think we attribute it more in the sense that every time we're able to communicate more with our customer, with our user, with our fans, it uh, allows them to understand you know, the design ethos, the engineering philosophies that go into every single one of our products. Because we're not selling a $140 mouse or a $4,000 um, laptop. What we're selling is, is, you know, our philosophies in terms of building a truly great product. And it's, it's the only one on the planet, so to speak. And, and that's where I think the stores are able to show it off in, in real life. They can put their hands on it. And they realize that not all, for example, laptops are, are created the same, you know. We, you get somebody saying, oh, this is a gaming laptop, but when they feel it, it's made of plastic, it's horrible, it's just terrible, the, the, the sound curve and, you know, what you see on a, on a screen, on the, on the, on the um, specs, do not reflect engineering in real life when it comes to hardware. And, and that's something I think the stores have been able to, to help us with, to kind of uh, evangelize that. Okay, so you've kind of got it now, right? You've got the stores, you've got the brand, but I mean, how did you get s started? Like, what was the first point that you realized that you were getting the kind of, uh, you know, uh, traction with the, 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 the kind of uh, uh, gamers? Like, what was the point? Was there any moment where you sort of realized, oh, you know, oh shit, you know, people are actually knowing what, we, what we're doing in our products? I think a couple of um, levels. I think, uh, as I shared a little earlier, in the early days, um, nobody wanted to invest in a hardware company. So we thought we were just going to come up with one product, you do it for ourselves, and then and get it out there. And uh, I think through word of mouth, you know, we had people saying all over the world saying, "I'd like, like to buy a product." And candidly, a lot of our distributors today were all pals of ours in the gaming world, where they said, "Hey, look, you know, some friends of mine want to raise a product," and we say, "Sure, you know, can you take ten? And they say, "Sure, you know, I'll go find ten other pals and I'll, I'll get it." So, you know, some of them have even joined the company. They started off as distributors and now they are doing really well and I'm happy for them. And, and we've all kind of grown up together um, from that perspective. But I think it was um, when we started seeing people having their razor shrines in their homes or... Tattoos, right? Tattoos. I think How, how many people was, have you seen that? We've have got thousands of people with tattoos. Thousands of tattoos. Yeah, thousands What's of the most common tattoo? Any of your face or just the company logo? Uh, I know that there is one with my name on it, uh, which was uh, pretty cool. I'm not going to ask where it was put on that person's body. <laughs> I, think, well, I think we can just... It was on his arm. It was oh, on his arm. Oh, That's okay. right. Um, but uh, yeah, the triple-headed snake, uh, which is what we call our logo, is the, uh, is the tattoo that we see a lot of gamers have. You know, it's like an icon for the, for the gamers. And, and for us, it's a huge responsibility. And that's what I tell our team, right, all the time. Every time you think about that freaking three and a half millimeter thing that you think you're going to get away with, or, or every single thing where, where the color is off by a certain percentage or, or what have you, remember, there are guys out there that have put their lives for life believing that we will always deliver the very best design and product out there. And to that point, if they don't have the passion, if they don't have the, the, the intensity of making sure that every single thing is perfect, whether it's outside the box, inside the box, the touch and feel of the paper and things like that, then we're not living up to it. And it's a huge responsibility. Every single day, we go through it, and that's why it gets tougher and tougher every day. What's a toaster? What is this? I mean, I wouldn't have mentioned it, but you tweeted it, and so it's kind of out there. And you have a lot of followers on Twitter, right? So a lot of people are probably, what, what's the toaster? Explain what this is. Yeah, so, so it's a movement, it's an offshoot. I like to call it a splinter of the cult, where um, a bunch of guys realize that um, we've got engineers in the company, in Razor, that, that have latitude to do anything they want, right? We, we, we provide them some additional resources. They make use of our... CNC machines or our, our 3D printers and stuff like that. And one of them was trying to design the ultimate toaster. And word got out that... Is it $140, like the 
mouse. Or yeah, it was, it's pretty insane, right? <laughs> Where each, piece, each of the pieces of toast would come out and with a triple-headed snake logo on it. And, the, and the, there's a movement called Give Me the Razor Toaster. And some dude kept saying, I want the Razor Toaster. I said, sure, fuck you. You know, you, you get a million fans on, the, on, on your page, I'll, I'll make a Razor Toaster. So he's been gathering this movement of people to try to convince me to do that. And uh, sometimes I, I, I shoot my mouth off like one of our staff had kitty ears on, on her Kraken headphones and she said, give me the kitty Krakens, right? And I said, oh sure, you get 10,000 people who want kitty ears on a Razer headphone, I'll make it. And she got 10,000. Did you make it? We're making it. You're making it? Uh, <laughs> how much yeah, is it going to cost? I don't know, I don't care. You know, so, so I think the things that we do, sometimes we build, we don't look at the cost. Like, like one of the things I sure. like to say, like for gamers, by gamers, we make left-handed mice. Every left-hand mouse, if you, if you do it, the, the tool costs a couple of hundred thousand dollars. There is no way ever to recoup the, um, you know, the, the costs of making a left-hand mouse. We've got two or we've got three. We you do make a loss. Because, so you, we make so a loss. You make a loss just to give people who are left-handed a mouse they can use better. We make a loss because we do it for the gamers. And that's something we is that normal for your, like some of the products you have? You make a loss just to have a community? Yeah, I think we do that all the time. I mean, every single one of our products, we design it just for um, the community. Yeah? You, you, you really make a loss on products all, all the time. What, 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 what is that? I mean, the toaster, right? I get that stuff. The toaster's not going to be done. Right, right. But like, like I mean, like... Unless they hit a million users. How, how many of the products... never reach. <laughs> how many of the products that you have are you making a loss on? Like, like 10%? So this is really a thing? I don't think, I don't think we really think about um, exact... I mean, I know the left-hand stuff. We, we definitely don't make a, uh, 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 any profit. In fact, we make a loss of uh, every single unit. But we think it's cool, you know? We want to give choices to the, um, to the gamers. We want to make sure we always make the ultimate the, the best. We want to push the limits to uh, make it perfect. So we don't really have like a formal financial business case for everything that we do. And we've been lucky there, to be there must to be somebody at the company who's looking after the numbers, right? I'm sorry? There must be somebody at the company. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and he, <laughs> he pulls his hair out every time and says, oh, that's cool, let's do that. Um, but that's the thing. I think too many companies out there are more focused on the bottom line and things like that when doing cool products. Let me give you an example. When we, when we first did a $130 mouse back in, let's say, 2007, that was insane. Right? My, the sales guy involved, who is still our head of sales, he's lost a lot of hair since, but he said, I would never be able to sell this mouse. Maybe, you know, 400 units, maybe. I mean, how many have you sold today? Millions of them. Millions. <laughs> okay. So I remind him of that all the time. And whenever he says like, oh my God, you know, this is really expensive. But we go like, as long as we build something truly great, you know, we believe the gamers will appreciate it. I mean, I mean that, that works for you guys, right? Because you're, you're a company that's valued at, what, one and a half billion, perhaps more? We don't comment on evaluations. Uh, I, reportedly, if you read techbrunch.com, it's one and a half billion. I've read your articles, it's, yes. Uh, it's not me, but like, thank you very much. Maybe after you can tell me the, the real valuation. But anyway. He's a great writer, by the way. When, Please go, you know, check it out. When, when you tech right? <laughs> Thank you very much. When you're, when you're a big company, right, it's easy to say, like, you know, you can make a loss on some devices because you're, you know, you're selling huge numbers, right, and you're selling $4,000 computers, right? But what about other, other people who are here? Maybe they're, like, early stage founders. Like, they can't really do that, right? What, what, what's your advice for them? Like, how do you get to the, the, the point that you guys have got, got to? Like, how do you start out? I think it doesn't make a difference how large the company um, is. It's all about being passionate about what you do and what you build. Um, hey, Chichong. And then, um, you know, it's, it's all about making sure that uh, you build really great product all the time for your users and, and constantly, over and over, deliver on it. And, and the rest will come. You know, if, if you're too obsessed with, with what you have at this point of time and uh, what, what might happen, you'll never get there. I mean, Everything that we do today, candidly, we don't have focus groups, we don't have an analysis of, of how it's going to get there. But we have a gut feel and a gut call that we know that the game is going to get there. When we first did the, the first true gaming laptop, everyone laughed. I went to all the suppliers in Taiwan and I said, I've got this idea of a great gaming laptop, super thin, super light. And they said, no, gaming laptops are thick and heavy. And I said, would you guys build it for us? They said, absolutely not. You are going to die and, and only Apple can sell expensive laptops. Sure, we went out, we acquired the talent, you know, we hired OQO, we built up the team, we killed three laptops along the way, designs, until we got the perfect laptop. And today, 
It's a complete new industry. The same guys that I went to beg to build that laptop are now copying this laptop. And it befuddles me. I mean, it's right in front of, of all of you. You know, all of you building a startup, believe in it. I mean, hear the advice and you get great advice from people around, but believe in what you're doing and you'll get there. Okay, we're, we're over time, but I'm gonna ask you some more questions because I think it's kind of fun. Sure. Uh, so you get to travel a lot. What's your favorite uh, city in the whole world and why? What's my favorite city? So this is, this is non-tech, I'm just, I'm just curious. It's non-tech? Yeah. But I you gotta answer quickly because we're already I know. over. I, so I, I, I wanna don't, get the looks. Oh, that's right, I, I see that. So I don't, I don't stay enough in a single city to really enjoy it. That's a terrible answer. I, I, know, I want a natural answer, answer right. Which city? But it's true, I, I, I really don't stay in a city long right. enough to uh, enjoy okay. any of the cities, but that's the thing. Maybe someday, you know. Next I'll, question, okay. are you gonna make a phone? Because you already bought, you bought a phone company. I've right. got no comments about I, that. We don't talk about products, and you know that before what? it's launched. I'll ask you questions you give me answers. It's not answer. Come on. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll give you a question. I'm, you I'm can, not going to make a toaster, too. Here's a question you can actually answer. Sure. Um, if, you were, if you were starting out again, what kind of, uh, what kind of company would you build? What, what kind of uh, startup would you, would you build now if you were just, like, I would do something 21 for, years I would, old or whatever? I would, I would do something for women. Um, because now I'm really popular with the gamers, I'd like to get really popular with the women. I, I don't know what to say, really. That, that's a good way to end this one, right? Thank you.